Greetings on this fourth Sunday of Advent in Series C. Our text for today is from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 to 10. Let's begin with a word of prayer. The Lord be with you. Lord God, Heavenly Father, stir up your power and come to us in this season as we prepare ourselves to see the return of your Son, as we lift up our heads and gaze at him coming to judge the living and the dead, that we lift up our heads knowing that our redemption is drawing near and that we lift them up in joy. For he continues to be with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What I'd like to do for Hebrews 10, um, 5 to 10, is to read to start with very slowly and follow the, the text here. Um, read Kleining's uh, translation, because it's so good. And then go back and do some, some commentating about it a little bit. Uh, make some observations, and to just simply, um, you know, reflect on what we might be able to do with this text, this Advent 4, if we were to preach on it, but more importantly, how it might fit in with the Magnificat, which is the gospel for this Sunday, and I highly recommend that you, that you preach on the Magnificat. So, let's come over here to the text and see what we can do here in terms of uh, just getting a handle on the meaning of everything. Um, one of the things I've done here is I've added verse 4 because I want you to see the, the, the fact that we have this negative and that this, this is going to be a positive. And as we go through here, I, I think you need to recognize that we have a citation here from Psalm 40, I think all of you know that. Kleining has an excursus on this, so I think it's very important that you, you take a look at that if you are preaching on this text. What's really, what's really curious here about this is that um, we have, a, um, a com in, in a sense, a paraphrase here in 8 and 9, you know, of really Psalm 40, and then a conclusion where we come and the person that is, in a sense, speaking is named Jesus Christ. So, so it's, it's, it's a very simple text. It's a lovely text. And I'm going to start with verse 4. For the blood of bulls and goats is not able to take away sins. Notice that, take away sins. Now, that's a very important theme in Hebrews, it's a great Lutheran theme, and in a sense the incarnation is so that someone might come in order to take away sins. Now, verses 5 to 7, consequently, on coming into the world, he, that is Christ, says, a sacrifice and an offering you did not desire but a body you have prepared for me. With burnt offerings and a sin offering, you were not well pleased. Then I said, see, I have come. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. Now verses eight and nine. After previously saying, sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and a sin offering you did not desire, nor were you well pleased with me, which are offered according to the law, he then has said, see, I have come to do your will. He does away with the first to establish the second. Now, in a sense, the conclusion, verse 10. But by that will, we are made holy through the offering of the body of Jesus once and for all. 
Now, the reason I did it this way is I wanted you to hear the whole text, because it's, it is a, it is a, it's a very poetic text, and par part of the reason for that is because, you know, it is a citation of, you know, a psalm that is, is, is poetry. But there, there are some things here that I think we need to sort of point out just to get, get ourselves going on this. First of all, and, and, and this is a really important point here, that, you know, coming into the world, this is clearly a reference to the Incarnation. And when I say that, I, I, don't, I don't want to underestimate this because this is the season of the Incarnation. And, um, you know, if you think of the Magnificat, what Mary is, is, is singing is she singing about what had just happened to her. And that is that she has conceived in her womb and how this is, you know, from now on, all generations will call me blessing. Behold, from now on. I mean, that is a huge statement by Mary, that it's a game changer. This is the shift in salvation history. And I mean, here Hebrews um, is talking about the, uh, the, the fact that, that coming into the world, Christ now is speaking to the Father. We have this inner dialogue between Christ and the Father. We, we, we had this before in Hebrews in chapter 2, but now we have it here. And, and it's, you know, th this is, of course, the, the, the negative. You know, the blood and bulls of goats is not able to take away sins. You know, and, and in a sense, it's reiterated here, sacrifices and burnt offerings you did not desire. But here's the, here's the key to this, a body. And, and if you're preaching on the Magnificat, how can you not think of how the body of Jesus is now, even though it's so tiny, is now in the womb of the Virgin Mary? And that is what we're going to be celebrating next week as we celebrate Christmas, you know. Um, a body has been prepared, and it's the Father who has prepared that body. Now, you know, you, you can see he... he he goes to the, the, the negative. You, you are not, not pleased. You, are, you did not desire. Um, but then, you know, the, the coming into the world here is spoken now in the first year. Behold, I am coming. You know? And, and this is the key here, to do the will of the Father. Now, this is where you would have preached the atonement. This is, the will of the Father is that the Son offer up himself on behalf, and, and so you go from incarnation to atonement through the body. I mean, it's really quite beautiful the way in which this is set up. And I can't say enough about how if you're going to preach on this text, you preach about the body. It's all about the body. And this is the Luke and Series C. And remember, Series C is about a body, you know. And, and you've heard this from me before, but I'll say it again. You know, the, 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 the body, it's, like, it's, it's almost like a mystery. What, what happens to the body of Jesus? Well, first, the sign of the incarnation is that it's wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. And then secondly, that same body, 33 years later, is taken down from the, claw, the cross and wrapped in cloth bands which is a sign of the atonement here. And then three, in Luke 24, Peter runs to the tomb and he sees only the cloth bands, and there you have a sign of the resurrection. So there's a beautiful, you know, opportunity to talk about that through the Magnificat, Mary's great song, which is the, as I said, the gospel for this Sunday. Now, as I said earlier, and I, I'll just repeat it here, this is in a sense a paraphrase, you know. He, he kind of quotes the psalm again. Um, and then, behold, I am coming to do the will. And, and you can see there that, that what is cited here by the author of Hebrews from Psalm 40 as an echo, so to speak, is the atonement. And I think that's very important to notice, that um, the atonement is what is in play here for this author. 
And, and that really, really makes a difference, I think, in the way in you preach this, because so often, you know, I mean, we forget during the Christmas season, we're talking about the incarnation so much, we forget about the atonement. And the atonement is the reason for the birth of the child. Um, he does have this very interesting statement here in, in verse 9 where he says uh, he does away with the first to establish the second. And there, there you've got, you know, the Old Testament, New Testament, the sacrifices that are not able to take away sins, the sacrifices of Christ that are able to take away sins. And, and I mean, th this is one of those wonderful statements here that I think you can see that this author recognizes how important the shift from old to new is, and yet also the continuity between old and new. Finally, the, the last verse is, is just delightful in every way. And I, I'm, I, I don't normally do this, but I want to cite uh, a little bit of Kleinig here because I think he really nails this down. And <clears throat> let me just read this or translate this verse again. By that will, right here, by that will, which is up here, we are sanctified, okay? We are made holy. And how is that? It's through the offering, and look what comes back here, the body, and now he's named Jesus Christ, and then the, the, the famous Hebrews, Ephapax, once and for all. Now, the, a magnificent sentence, and here is what Kleinig says about it, and, I, and I, I alert you to this. It is on pages 483 and 484. Um, in, in a way, this is what he calls a confession of faith. Uh, and, and what, it, what it, it is doing for the congregation is it's making this confession. First of all, that we are made holy. And this, th this, this is what the incarnation is about, that, that God comes into this world as the Holy One to show us what it means to be holy, and that we are made holy through that body that we are going to be celebrating in this season. And it's, it's, it's ongoing. So the whole sacramental life of the church, the whole liturgical life of the church, excuse me, is built into this statement we are made holy, you know. We are, we are, we are the holy ones, and and it's it's just a a great statement that we, you know, cannot emphasize enough. Secondly, the source of that holiness is the body of Jesus, you know, and this is the body wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger. This is a body taken down from the cross, you know, that has been beaten, tortured, killed wrapped in, in, in cloth bands. This is the body that rises up through the cloth bands um, and, and shows us in his resurrected body what a body looks like that is holy and has suffered and still has the marks of his suffering. So the source of our holiness is this body of Jesus Christ. Body, body, body. How can you not preach on the body of Christ? And then finally... This is the will of the Father. This is the plan of God. This is the divine plan. This is the Trinitarian plan. And the Trinitarian plan was, first of all, to present that body to make us holy, the atonement. And then, having done that, uh, we are made holy. And it is his will that Jesus continues now in the life of the church to be the source of our sanctification. And so when we, when we look at the, the, the final verse of this text, we can see how there is, in a way, this incredibly lyrical hymn that is our gospel lesson, that is a hymn to the body of Jesus that is in the womb of the Virgin Mary. And so I think there's a wonderful intertextuality between the, the, the epistle here from Hebrews and the, the text that is the gospel lesson for this Sunday. And 
the body of Jesus, I mean, you should be preaching on that every Sunday, not just in this season and not just on this text, because it is through the body of Jesus that we are made holy once and for all.